You're all aware of climate disruption, disappearing animals and insects, and frightening shifts in our environment. In these next two videos, we're going to explore the relationship of these to our modern human culture. What's an armadillo for? When I ask my students this, there's usually an uncomfortable silence, followed by guesses like boots, a purse, a belt, because we tend to first or only think of things as they pertain to human systems. Only after something has been harvested or processed does it have value to our current economic system. Culturally, we use inherently narrow boundary thinking in our decisions, at least so far. An armadillo isn't for anything, by the way. It's an evolved creature living its life in tropical ecosystems, perhaps not to most humans, but it has value, just as it is. Okay, companies sell products that we demand and in doing so maximize profits, which is revenue minus expenses. As a result of producing or consuming these products, there are many positive and negative impacts called externalities. An externality is an impact on people or the planet that is not included in the cost or the price of the product. Positive externalities might be things such as parks and education as well as police and fire protection or a bee meant for honey production which pollinates a nearby crop. Negative externalities include pollution, disease, climate change, or the extinction of a species. There are all sorts of negative social and environment externalities. Even if we care about them, things that are not included in our price system are not really considered in most of our day-to-day -day decisions. Who doesn't love orangutans and rainforests? But if the healthier peanut butter, which contains palm oil, is on sale for 30% off, we buy it, thus creating a tiny bit of market demand that businesses integrate into their plans for more palm plantations and thus less Indonesian rainforest. Orangutan loss is a negative externality of cheap peanut butter. In this, we are like most animals who don't consider their waste products and their foraging decisions. But we do include some of our impacts in our consumption decisions. We can and do make rules at local scales or with non-essential products to improve our environment. There are many local and some international success stories of social and political will affecting prices and regulations on products. The banning of DDT, chlorofluorocarbons, leaded gasoline, etc. are all environmental success stories. Some rivers in the Midwest were so polluted 70 years ago, you could light them on fire and you would never want to eat fish from them. Recognition and community involvement change these situations. Recall from the last video series, energy underpins all economic activity. Globally, unless and until we change the definition of GDP, our economies and our energy use will remain tightly linked. So the externalities from global human energy use are a different class of problem than these local and regional stories. Fossil carbon in the form of oil, coal, and natural gas provides around 85% of the world's energy mix and this number hasn't changed over the last 30 years, during which our total use and emissions has more than doubled. Coal that powers our processes and gadgets in existing coal plants costs around three cents to generate one kilowatt hour of electricity. If we had to internalize the negative environmental externalities like climate change and air pollution, etc., Scientists estimate the full cost would be around 18 cents per kilowatt hour, or about six times as much. And I should point out, this itself is a narrow boundary way of looking at the problem, because it only includes the cost to near-term human systems, not the worth of extinct species, future generations, etc. So, as we recall from the energy videos, in industrial processes we use fossil labor in a ratio of over a thousand to one, replacing tasks humans used to do manually. This results in massive increases in wages and profits and massive access to cheap stuff. But because we use so much of this energy, the profits and the price of the goods are extremely sensitive to energy price increases. If we internalized all the environmental costs of coal, 
So it now costs at 18 cents to industry. Most of our industrial processes would no longer be profitable. So coal businesses and gas and oil and wind turbine and Starbucks and Walmart only pay the direct costs of their products. And because electricity and many other things as a result are very cheap, we consumers only pay the direct costs as well. The externalities of these choices are not included in our economic system. They are real costs, but shifted to the environmental commons. Okay, before we take a quick overview of these metabolic impacts on Earth's environment, a quick side note. I just referred to myself and to you all as consumers. This semantically concedes ground to our current cultural narrative. I am a human being, not a consumer. In a similar way, what we are about to discuss are the impacts from human use of fossil fuels. The correct term, to be clear, is fossil carbon and hydrocarbons, which our current culture is using as fuels. Something to keep in mind. Words matter.